by Dale Ray. Uh, um, you, Dale, you wait me. Yeah, Dale, you wait me. Uh, talking about machine learning prediction of the fine grain plants. Yeah, okay. please start. Okay, hello everyone. And I'm uh, Leo Ling, from, uh, an undergraduate student from NTSU, and my supervisor is Tomo Sang. And today my topic is the machine learning prediction of the fraud in fraud frogs. And this is my outline. First, I will talk the motivation of this project. And secondly, uh, I'm talking about the data and the data processing uh, before the model chaining. And third is I will talk about the model I use. I use two models uh, so far. And first, I will show the preliminary result, and finally, I will talk about the future work. Okay. And when we are studying in gases, and we will do the SET fit to uh, analyze the many property of the galaxies. And dust in the gas, this galaxies will uh, absorb the UV light to the mid infrared light and re emit it uh, in the far infrared light. And so we have to pick here in the SCD fit. And so if uh, their uh, far infrared drug is important for the and that says the dust in the galaxy. So if we we don't have the foreign free frogs, we can't know the dust property. And but foreign prey is hard to detect on the ground. And we must have the test scope to up to detect the frog infrared uh, outer space. And the space machine is takes a long time and is expensive. So we want it to use the machine learning to get the front frame flux. Uh, so we can, the goal is to uh, get the front frame flux uh, by the machine learning. And the data I'm use is from the NEP W uh, from Sunday's catalog. And the red the red circle here is the NEPW, and in this region there are 67,000 <coughs> of galaxies. And the red square area is the Herschel data, and uh, Herschel is the fly fly telescope. And there's only the 1800 of galaxies have the fly fly measurement. So it's only 2%. Sources have the foreign foreign data, and 98% didn't have. It. And this is the view of the machine learning. The input is the flux for the axial pole band and near infrared to mid infrared band, and the output the model is will is the value of the far infrared. And then the actual uh, catalog I use is five bands of HSC for optical and nine bands of Akari near infrared, near infrared to mid infrared. And Y and Spencer is the near infrared and there are two bands of length. So total feature, total input data is the 18 bands. And the target is the partial spire telescope and the there are three bands of the target. And so since uh, there are 18, uh, 1800 sources have the Herschel data. So we, among these 1800 sources, we calculate the, we, the detection from other bands have the sources or not. So, in the HSC data, they have almost all of the so galaxies have the data in HSC, but some, like S7 or L24 in Akari, didn't have data. So we need to 
deal with this missing data. So we use the version rich imputer to impute this uh, missing data uh, in my data set. So the final number of sources I use is shown in this imputer sources for uh, 20, uh, two, 250 and 350, uh, almost 1,800. And the 500 turns is only 900. And the total 18 bands have the detection sources is only 400 and 200. And then before the model training, we need to separate the data into training data and test data. And since that here in the figure, we set, split the data to 10 subgroup. And every, in one time, we choose one test to be uh, one group subgroup to be the test data. And we train 10 times uh, in one model. And you can, it's because it wants to uh, decrease the error from the model. And then it's the model I use. First model is the support vector machine. I use the code from the package circuit, a circuit there. And I use the SVM regress, regression function of the model. And I use the loose function. This function is the distance when we calculate, we update the model. So first we uh, input the 18 band sources into the model and calculate the first y predict. And then we will calculate the loose function between the y hat and the true y and update into the model. And we this is the we call the one iteration. And Doing the many types of iteration, we can uh, get the y hat uh, correct. When we uh, when the y hat is converged, we'll stop training the model. And the second model is the neural network, and same using from the circuit learn and the regression regression function is called multi-layer perception regression. The LN is constructed by many layers and in the layers have many perceptrons. And every perception is calculated by the uh, linear combination from the front layer. So we can calculate every perception from the front layer and uh, so on to the output layer and the upper layer will be the value, the foreign prey front. And this is the other model. And then this the, shows the result. Left panel is the 18 bits. And right is the, the, have the Bayesian imputer. The, The axis is the true value, and the y-axis is the predict. And this, this, as you can see, uh, the point is the source, the source. And you should, uh, more closer to the green, uh, green line, one to one line, is more best. And we calculate the root, root, root mean square error to, uh, this, uh, this value means the performance of the model training. And this is the one sub subsample. And this is the result of the SVN. And this is the result of the NN. And then we calculate the 10 subsamples, take the 10 subsamples, and then here is the result error. As you can see here, the version imputer will uh, all 
is a little bit uh, bigger than the 18 bits. And we have, uh, because we have to do the, the imputer, we have to do the data processing here. And they compare to these two uh, model, the SVNs uh, results better. And then the future work, the first is the, to adjust the model hyperparameters to judge the, my, to test the which parameter is more better, more better. And then we, uh, there, the imputer model we are using is, uh, we, we, we will try to uh, use the di different imputer map because this will generate the, the error. And third is the fe feature importance. And uh, this work is to find out which feature is more important uh, in the machine learning and it can you want to find find out the physics, physical meanings in the machine learning. And the last is to use the flux we get and to predict the dust property from our result. And this is all of my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any uh, question. Um, so, do you have any questions? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I have a question about loss function in support vector machines. Uh, yes, this one. Uh, you have a gamma exponential minus gamma and uh, no, Roman square. Yes. Okay. Is the gamma a trainable hyperparameter? Yes, this, this is trainable. Uh, uh, we set this uh, gamma first initial. Oh, so it is the uh, model chain. It is yes, yes. Um, I'm, I'm not very sure because, well, uh, for a loss function, this. Mm, okay, nothing. Uh, well, mm, I, I feel like, like this gamma doesn't have actual meanings in machine learning because you know, it is always prop proportional. That means you use one, then the loss is. Like it's also one, but if you use two, then it's just two times of it. Then the gradient is proportional. Then it doesn't have actual meaning. So I'm not sure why there is a gamma. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yes. So uh, is the neural net also using the same loss function? No, no, no. The neural network is is not Okay. Any other question? Yeah, please. Uh, Maybe yeah. uh, do you have the lower boundary for the uh, loss function so that you can know that at which uh, range that your um, train data is um, enough to you for the test? Uh, you go back to the slide with the FBA model. This? Yes. So do you have the like? Low boundary for the loss function, so that we know. Oh yes, we, we will we will set the the value that uh, between y head uh, to y, and then start. Uh, no, actually we we will stop the training when the y head is uh, keep uh, be a uh, same value in mm -hmm. the same value exactly the same. Uh, it, it, will, it will set the range, maybe 0.01, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Ah, okay. So, Dennis, do you have any question? Yes, uh, well, it's a basic question. Uh, I wonder, I mean, you you try to train your uh, your machine on, uh, of, in front of mission at relative zero, right? Yes. You mean at error? So, do you think it could be, well, what, what will it change if you have different projects? Uh, uh, one 
additional parameters that you need to add, and uh, how could it affect the results? It means how to do to to decrease the error. How to uh, account for the red chip changes? Because what you, you will have changes anyway in one length, and so the properties are at the given band uh, will depend on the red chip. So I, I, I'm not sure whether or not you can include the red chip in, oh. in the training in some way, or if you need to fix it. Yes, I, I didn't edit the red chip. On the input, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll, that should, maybe we'll have inference the result. Maybe a future work. Yes, yes. Uh, no, it's, well, it's uh, something you can predict very simply, so maybe mm -hmm. it's a uh, driver and a yeah. simple way. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, you, you can continue on Slack. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. Is there any announcement from yeah. 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 Yeah.